Welcome to the Dynon Channel, your video source for information, education, and training on Dynon Avionics' industry-leading line of integrated avionics for experimental amateur-built and light sport aircraft. Today's topic, Tech Tips, Replacing an Autopilot Servo Shear Screw. Hi, I'm David Weber, and welcome to the Dynon Avionics Tech Tip video series. In this video, we'll show you how to replace a broken or damaged shear screw. Let's get started. First, let's gather up all the tools and materials we need to complete the task. You're going to need a medium-sized flat-bladed screwdriver, a pair of needle-nose pliers, side snips, 332-inch Allen wrench, a permanent marker like a Sharpie, some high-strength thread locker, Loctite 271 or 263 is preferred, and the Dynon supplied cotter pin MS24665-210, it's a tongue twister, and the Dynon supplied servo shear screw. Okay, first step is to remove the existing cotter pin. Using your flat blade screwdriver, pry up the cotter pin ends, eighth of an inch or more, like that. Now let's use our needle nose pliers to straighten those out. What we're trying to do is make it as easy as possible to pull this cotter pin through the shaft. Look at that. So once we've got that cotter pin out, don't move that nut. Let's mark that nut with our Sharpie. This is going to help us later on when we realign the nut to the output shaft of the servo. Once the nut's been marked, we can remove the nut. The wavy washer. And the nylon washer. I suggest you put this in a safe place. I don't want you losing anything. You can now see the broken head of the shear screw. Don't try and remove that. It should just come off when you remove the arm. Of course, if you have a capstan servo, it's very similar. That exposes the two remaining holes and the broken shear screw. Don't bother taking that out. Because of these two remaining holes, we can put the new shear screw right in there. All right, let's start putting things back together. Take your shear screw and apply your thread locker to the bottom side of the shear screw. We do this so that the thread locker does not weep up in, into the head and out, causing the arm to glue itself to the disc that would affect the performance of the shear screw. So here we go, we apply the little thread locker here. And start it by hand. Now I'm gonna use my 332nd Allen wrench to put it in there, but don't tighten this. You tighten it, you're gonna break the shear screw, you're gonna to have to replace it again. Just make sure that the head of the shear screw seats on the top surface of the disc, just like that. Do not need to tighten it. Okay, so now we can put the arm back on or the capstan, capstan if you have a capstan servo. You'll notice that it'll be a little bit of a snug fit with the arm going over the shear screw. Force it on in a downward direction. Avoid any side-to-side -side wiggling. If you do that, once again, you can damage that shear screw. You'll have to replace it. You can see how that seats in there really nice. Okay, we can put our hardware back on now. We start off with the nylon washer. Go to the wavy washer. Then the castle nut. The castle nut, once again, just sort of a hand tight and your alignment should now, uh, with the hole and the slot in the, in the castle nut, be there. If you, for some reason, have lost your alignment, you can torque this nut to four, no more than four and a half inch pounds. 
If you tor torque the nut, always make sure you back off to do the alignment of the slot and the hole on the output shaft. Here's our cotter pin. On the cotter pin, put the longer tang up on top, so make it easier to pull it through. Grab your needle nose pliers, grab that top tang on the cotter pin and pull really firmly toward yourself. As you're pulling toward yourself, pull that top tang up and over the top side of the output shaft. Once you have it in this configuration, we can now remove about half the material that's on that cotter pin. Just like that. Now using your flat bladed screwdriver, finish that bend off. Always start off with the top bend. You can see how that is nice and snug up against the surface. Turn this around here for you so you can see the back side of the cotter pin bend. Just like that. That's how you replace the shear screw on the servo. This is David Weber with Dynon Avionics. You can see more of these tech tip videos on the Dynon channel located linked on our website. And remember, go fly. For more information on planning or capabilities of the Skyview system, please see our website at dynonavionics.com, where you can find links to our system installation guides, pilot user guides, and other valuable information like our user form. Thank you for watching the Dynon channel.